Hello everybody, today I'm going to explain and demonstrate what is a sound field and what are the different types of sound fields in detail. Alright, let's get started. So what is a sound field? Sound field is a region of an elastic medium that contains the sound waves. Sound fields can be classified into two main types. They can be classified based on the distance of the sound waves from the source, or they can be classified based on the environment in which the sound waves are present. So based on the distance from the source, they can be further classified into near field and far field. Based on the environment of the source, they can be classified into free field and diffuse field. So we will talk about these uh, fields in greater detail. So the first is near field. So as the name suggests, near meaning closer to the source. So near field is a sound field which is at a distance of one wavelength of sound from the sound source or at a distance of three times the largest dimension of the sound source, whichever is greater. So what happens in the near field? In the near field, sound behaves a little differently. For instance, there is no simple relationship between the sound pressure level and the distance, meaning sound in the near field does not obey the inverse square law. So what is the inverse square law? The law states that the sound pressure level should decrease by 6 decibel for every doubling in distance from the source. For example, if the distance currently is 1 meter and the sound pressure level at that point is 80 decibel, if I double the distance, if I increase it to 2 meters, the sound pressure level should become 74 decibel as per the inverse square law, but that doesn't hold true in, in the near field. And in the near field, the sound pressure and the acoustic particle velocity are not in phase. Now let's look at far field. So far field is a sound field that begins after the near field ends, and it extends up to infinity. So there is a transition you know, between the near field and the far field. It's gradual. And far field is the opposite of near field in the sense that it obeys the inverse square law. Sound pressure level decreased by 6 decibel for every doubling in distance in the far field. And also, the sound pressure and the acoustic particle velocity are in phase as opposed to not in phase in case of near field. Alright, now let's look at a diagram that can, it represents both the near field and far field. Here is a pictorial representation of near field and far field. So as you can observe, on the left you have a source which emits sound waves. Let's say it's a loudspeaker. And then there is a near field which spans a distance of one wavelength from the source. And then the far field begins where the near field left off and extends to infinity. So what I want to convey here is how the shape of the wavefront changes. So the speaker can be considered as a point source and it's going to emit sound waves in all three directions. So if you look at the wavefront, the wavefront is a spherical wavefront. On 2D, uh, it looks like a curve. But then as the spherical wavefront keeps moving away from the source, it becomes bigger, larger and larger. So the, the, uh, you know, the wavefront is still a spherical wavefront, but it has a very large radii, such that a part of the spherical wavefront appears like a plane. So the wavefront in the far field is planar, while the wavefront in near field is spherical. All right, let's look at what is a free field. A free field, as the name suggests, it enables sound to travel freely without any reflections. Now, sound never encounters any reflections in the first place in a free field because there are no obstacles to cause reflections of sound waves. So there are two cases in which sound can exist in a free field. Either sound travels infinitely long and never has an opportunity to reflect, or sound travels a finite distance and is completely absorbed. And in the free field, the inverse square law holds true, which states that the sound pressure level decreases by 6 decibels for every doubling in distance. Now, the examples of free field are wide open fields and anechoic chambers. Let's look at pictures of the examples. So, as you can see here on the left, there is a wide open plane. It's totally flat except for a tree. And if you, if you, were, if you were to yell or speak, you know, you're never going to hear your sound back. You'll never hear your echo because the sound waves emitted from your mouth will just travel forward, travel in all three directions and will never come back to you. 
The same scenario it can be recreated in uh, in an anechoic chamber on the right. So here you're observing anechoic wedges, which are designed to absorb all the sound incident on them, including low frequency sound. Okay, now I'll be uh, playing a sound file which recreates uh, it being in a free field condition. So you will get a glimpse of how sound sounds like in the free field. Listen carefully. Hello. 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 All right, I hope you listen to sound carefully. So if you uh, listen to it, uh, you can get a feel of the word hello and there are no reflections at all. I mean, there's dead silence between the two hellos. So that's a free field. You only hear the sound once and it just passes by you. It never comes back. There are no reflections. All right, now let's look at what is a diffuse field. A diffuse field, in short, is the direct opposite of a free field, meaning it is a field where sound is characterized by multiple reflections. So there are so many reflections such that you can never distinguish between the real sound and the reflected sound. So if there is a room and a, the room has a diffuse field, you know, there's going to be sound in every corner of the room. And if you were to have a sound level meter and measure the sound pressure level, you're going to measure the same value in a, any corner of the room because the sound is diffused. You know, it's, it's a diffused field. And in this field, sound doesn't obey the inverse square law, and the sound pressure and the particle velocity are not in phase, hence the sound intensity is also zero. Now, examples of diffuse field are reverb chambers, orchestra halls, symphony halls, cathedrals. So remember, the diffuse field can be used to your advantage as well, especially in orchestra halls and symphony halls where, you know, uh, there are, uh, they have specific reverb times that actually resonates with the uh, symphony or the orchestra so as to give the best live performance. Now let's look at the pictures of the examples. So on the left you have a cathedral, uh, you know, which is huge and sound would be uh, diffused. It is a perfect example of a diffused field. And on the right you have a symphony hall. Uh, you know, if you look at the ceiling, they're all curved, where, you know, that's for a reason. You know, they kind of bend and distribute the sound everywhere to every region also it uh, makes sense you know if you're sitting either on the uh, lower end or in the higher uh, anywhere in the auditorium you're gonna have to hear the sound clearly all right now let's look at a sound demo in a diffused field listen carefully hello 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 all right I hope you listened the hello and it was just muffled. The, the intelligibility was not good. It was like an echo, but it's not an echo, it's a reverb. So, you know, the delay between the incident sound and the reflected sound is less than 50 millisecond, but then it sounds muffled because sound is reflecting off of multiple walls. So that's the diffuse feel. So you might be wondering, what is the sound field around us? I mean, obviously we have sound around us, which means we have a sound field around us. So we're living in a sound field that is neither free field nor diffuse field because um, we, we have reflections, but we don't have enough reflections to categorize it as a diffuse field. So this field is called as a semi reverberant field, which is like a combination of both. Now think about it, if you have a bedroom and you have, uh, you know, hard reflecting surfaces like tables, walls, and you also have absorbing surfaces like couch, curtains, carpets. So, you know, it's a mixture of both. And also sound doesn't obey the inverse square law and the particle and the velocity and the pressure are not in phase. So let's look at a picture of a room. So as I mentioned, you know, you have hard surfaces, reflecting surfaces like walls, ceilings, and tables, and you have absorbing surfaces like carpets, you know, couches, curtains. Okay, so how will sound sound like in such a field? Well, it'll not be too uh, diffuse, nor it'll be like uh, without any um, reflections. So it'll be like a combination of both. Listen to it. Hello. 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 
All right, so when you listened, I hope you listened a small, uh, very small reverb. So that's a reflection off of the reflecting surfaces, but then overall it, sound, it doesn't sound too diffuse. So those are the fields of sounds and the sound demonstrations. I hope you enjoyed it and understood it. Thank you for watching and have a great day.